Coming up on the Horse TV channel, we travel to the Lone Star State for the 2006 Bayer Select World Championship Show. Over 850 exhibitors compete in speed events, cutting and reining for the chance to be the best in their class. The action gets underway next on AQHA's Best of the West. Welcome to the Wild West in Amarillo, Texas, the fourth AQHA Bayer Select World Championship Show. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Metters, with me Pete Kyle, former AQHA Professional Horseman of the Year. And Pete, when you talk Bayer Select, it's age 50 and over, and this show definitely has a different feel from other AQHA events that you could attend. It's a very relaxed atmosphere around here. Everybody enjoys themselves a lot. AQHA does a lot of different events for the exhibitors as they finish the show to go out and have a good time, and they do. Not to slight what they do in the arena. They all take that very serious and are very competitive, as you'll see. Good mix of events in this show. We'll start with the roping events, and we'll move on to cutting and reining. We start on the team roping side of things. The judges will be watching the heading horse. This chick's royally done is a gray mare, ridden by Lon Lemon, who lives in Nebraska. And Pete, just give us an idea what the judges are, are looking for here in the heading. Well, they watched how that mare scored right in the box and then ran out and raided right up to the side of that hip there so that Lon could get a good run and throw a nice loop there and catch it. And then a set and take that steer out of there so the healer can come in and have a straight shot to heal it. 212 is the score. That mare also qualifying for the finals in healing. That's Robert Park, lives in Phoenix, Arizona, riding Play Nick. This is a gelding, sired by Colonel Winnenick. Again, he gets a good break here, and he's running real strong right up to the hip and a nice loop right there. Good set, and as you can see, he's going straight across the arena for his healer to get a good loop. He didn't quite face as strong as he'd want. And score not quite good enough to take the lead, 211 and a half, second at the moment. Irish Whiskey Mix is next to go. Roger Coday is the rider. And watching team roping, you're so used to the clock deciding the winner, but here, you know, it's all on how well this heading horse executes. Yeah, that's all they're watching, Jeff, is how this horse performs and puts his rider in a position to be able to catch that steer right there. Roger's a very good roper, and he should have a nice run right here. Gets there quickly, 215 and a half. That will change things at the top of the leaderboard. You like to have a horse that's explosive out of the box, and that's the case here with this gelding. He has a real nice set right there, and then really faces as well for a strong finish for those judges. Robert Beatty getting set, comes from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Zan's Leo San, this is another gelding. 216, that's what it's going to take now to move them to the lead. You can see that horse was just a little nervous there in the box, anticipating that go, but got out of there real clean. Ran up there. Didn't get quite a good set. See how that steer faded away a little bit on him right there? He didn't get him pulled out of that corner quite as well for his healer to get a shot at him. Judges noticed all that. 210 is the score for Robert Beatty. Now the defending champion, Zan's Diamond Command, ridden by Malcolm Davis. This horse is by the great Zan's Diamond son, the horse Carol Rose, that's had so many great horses. And this is a really nice horse. And Malcolm's a very seasoned veteran here in the roping events. And he should probably have another nice run here. Like you say, he won this event last year. Come back trying to do it again. Had Very nice. He had to chase that steer well down the arena, but yeah, the judges like it. 218 and a half for Malcolm Davis, the defending champion, right back on top of the leaderboard. As you can see, he had a fast running steer, but his horse caught it and got him turned right there real nice. Now to spot flash, ridden by Donald Bogle from Dexter, New Mexico. There's a lot of great ropers that have come out of the state of New Mexico. We'll see what Donald can do here. His horse runs up there, rates real good, and gives him a nice loop. He's going right across there. Healer gets a good loop there and a real nice face. This might push him a little bit. Good enough for second place at the moment, a reserve world title if that holds up at 217. The shot of that gelding leaving the box there. Second place at the moment, there's Roger Coday again, this time on Kusa Jewel. It's really nice being able to have two horses qualified, and that's what you can qualify in show at the Select World Show. It takes a little pressure off your, your first horse. You know you've got a second one in the background. Roger had a good run on his first one, so it takes a little pressure off on the second one. He comes out and gets a nice set there and getting steer drug away. A little weak on the trumpet face there, but a nice run as a whole. 
Two ten and a half is the score. And we're down to our final exhibitor. John Hershberger lives in Glendale, Arizona. 7S Lone Star is the horse. John, he's a veteran roper. He competes at jackpots all over and is a very good roper. His son is a professional trainer right out of Phoenix and is very good. John Steer turned to the left there a little on him, but his horse handled it well. Jason comes in and ropes both feet, and John gets faced around. Nice run. 214 and a half, that's going to put him near the top, but uh, it was a tough roping. 218 and a half, the winning score, Malcolm Davis and Zan's Diamond Command. They repeat as the heading world champions here at the Select Show. The reserve world champion turns out to be Donald Bogle and Spot Flash with their score of 217. So a little bit of a dynasty going for Zan's Diamond Command and Malcolm Davis. Back-to-back -back world titles in the heading. When we come back, tie down roping. Don't go away. Back in Amarillo, AQHA's best of the West coverage of the Bayer Select. That's Ronnie Austin, defending champion in tie down roping, and he is back to defend. First up, Tejan's Olina Pep. This is a gelding ridden by John Henderson, who lives in Stigler, Oklahoma. In the calf roping here, Jeff, they're looking for this horse to do the same thing as in the team roping, where he's going to run up and right behind this calf, and then you want a real good, strong stop. Horse kind of checked him a little bit, but run right back up there and sure gave him a nice loop and a good stop. And then that horse supposed to back straight on up. You can see he's not backing up as well, working that rope. Uh, so that rider had a little hard time getting to the calf. Then he's got to flank it and tie three legs with two wraps and a hooey and then walk back and return to his horse and get on him to step forward. Well, it's a thin line. You don't want your horse to underwork, don't want him to overwork. And when it's all said and done here for John Henderson and Tejans Alina Pep, the score of 202. Next up, CNN smart gunner Ronnie Austin, Ringling, Oklahoma, defending champion, and he won the title on this horse a year ago. And again, we'll watch him score here in the box. This horse is sitting really nice. Breaks and runs up to that calf. Ronnie's got a nice loop, and look how well he stops and then gets back and holds that calf tight right there for Ronnie to get a good flank on. See how that rope's staying real good and tight right there for him? That way that calf can't get away from him. Now the whole time the judges are watching this horse, and he's, he's held that rope good, but hasn't drugged that calf out from under Ronnie. He had a nice run right here. What a story. He's just back from MD Anderson for chemo treatments has leukemia, taking five pills a day, and still has the energy and the enthusiasm to come out and tie down rope, and he is setting the mark at the moment with that 215. Here again, this is a, a replay of that run. As you can see, that horse that Kef was weaving around, he followed it right there and gave Ronnie a good shot. And then here is that horse holding that rope tight and sitting back on his hips and hind legs there. Now the run's not complete, until Ronnie steps back up on this horse and steps him forward one step. Unlike the timed events at the rodeo when they throw their hands up, they have to wait eight seconds. And in this, it's just a matter of when that uh, horse steps forward and releases that rope. Next up is big classic wonder, a stallion ridden by Sid Miller, who's from the cowboy capital of the world, Stephenville, Texas. When your hometown has that kind of a title, you expect big things from him as he backs his horse into the box here. There's a lot of great cowboys, all right, coming out of Stephenville. This is a tough event for ropers right here because they've got to run and stop and then get off and run down and handle a calf right there, flank him, and then hope he doesn't kick him and tie all three legs and then be done. And uh, Sid did a nice job. That horse could have worked his rope just a little more for him. Ronnie Austin setting a tough pace at 215 and the score for Big Classic Wonder and Sid Miller. Going to be well shy of that, 202 and a half. And next in the box will be Booger's Bay Watch. This is a mare ridden by Jim McDonald. Comes out of Kansas and, you know, 215, pretty tough score to beat. That's a, that was a very good score. So these guys got to have a nice run in order to get around that. He gets a quick loop right here and gets off. Got that calf down and, and struggles a little on the flank, but gets him flanked there. You can see one wrap, two wraps, and then that hooey between the two legs. And you can see slack in that rope. His, his horse did not continue to back up here, and as you can see, it's just standing there real relaxed. So the judges are going to hurt that considerable. Well, they take note, and his score is 200. 
well behind our leader, who remains Ronnie Austin, who has another horse to show yet in the finals. But first, David Watt, Ohio Cowboy, smart late star, is a gelding by Gray Starlight. They'll be next to work. This is a really pretty horse here. Sitting very attentively in the box there, looking and waiting and broke real strong. Got out behind that barrier, which is a, a penalty if they were to run through it. That calf weaved all over the arena, and that was a nice job by that horse to be able to follow that through. Getting tied down there and finished up. And then that horse walked forward right there and put slack in the rope, and that's a major penalty right there when they do that. Well, David knows it, the judges know it, and the score here for Smart Late Star and David Watt, 194. So that leaves one exhibitor, and it's Ronnie Austin, who also happens to be in the lead with a horse that he won this title on a year ago. Coming back here with Sunita Norbert, though, and a chance to finish one, two. The question is, which horse is going to be first? Oh, he's giving him a little bit of a hard time right there in the box. So you want your horse to walk in there and back up squarely in that corner and sit quiet. You don't want him to fiddle around. Those judges are going to hurt him for that. So he's starting off with a negative. He's going to have to come up here and make up some ground. Oh, and he had a little tough luck on his loop there. He run that calf through the loop. As you see, he caught him by the hind foot, which it's a legal catch. So he's going to have a little harder time, though, being able to get this calf down. Again, now, it just says he has to tie three legs. As you see, he went for the bottom front leg, the hind leg, and then back to the front leg, two wraps and a hooey, and he's done, and glad to be through. Makes his way back to Sunita Norbert. Not going to beat his 215, but the question is good enough to maybe get second. What a story, Ronnie Austin beating leukemia and beating the competition here. He does finish 1-2, 208, good enough for that reserve title and a chance to see this great gelding leaving the box again. He, uh, he, like I say, was a little nervous in the box, but when he got out, he got out really nice and ran up there and then held that ground. Ronnie knows a big step toward victory is no mistakes. AQAJ Judge told me one time, he said, Ronnie, your biggest problem is you beat yourself so many times. So when I back in the box before they pull that barrier, the last thought on my mind is, Ronnie, don't beat yourself. If you get beat by a bad calf or somebody else goes out there and makes a nice run, and that's all right, but don't beat yourself. And being here today, you know, a lot of things that I've been through in life, I feel it's just such a blessing to be here and to be with this organization. It's, it's something I'll be looking forward to next year. Ronnie Austin, one of the most incredible stories at this year's Bayer Select World Show beating leukemia and coming back and defending his title in tie down roping and also picking up the reserve honors as well. Great show for Ronnie Austin here in Amarillo. Picking up his trophy from current AQHA president, Walt Fletcher. Well, when we come back the other side of the box for team roping, the healers are getting loose. We'll be right back. Back in Amarillo, Texas, the Bayer Select, the focus of our AQHA Best of the West coverage. Well, we've crowned our Bayer Select World Champion in heading, and now we change sides of the box to healing. And we actually saw 7S Lone Star and John Hirschberger on the heading side of things. And Pete, give us an idea what the judges are looking for in these healing horses. Jeff, again, it all starts right out of the healing box there where they're watching them, and then they score how those horses come around that corner and give John a shot there to get this steer healed. Not a bad start for John Hirschberger and 7S Lone Star, 213 and a half. That's Zach Weegis there. He has full sisters qualified for this final. This is the first one, Miss Angelina. Interesting guy, financial planner. He won a round of American Gladiator at the age of 42, but I think his biggest challenge may be ahead of him. He's engaged to be married, but uh, still roping. His horse came out in real good shape, came up in a good position right there and got in for a nice loop right there and a good set to her hind end to stop that steer. That's a good run. New leader at 216 and a half. There's J.D. Leaguer, ridden by Lee Lyles from Sulphur, Oklahoma, and he is the defending champion. And so far, it's been uh, good for the defending champions at this year's Bayer Select. I look for Lee to have a nice run. He's a very good roper and consistent all the time. Horse turned around there and gave him a good shot and did and stopped. That's real strong. And the judges' scores put him in second place at the moment, 215 and a half. We just still in the lead. Zans, Katie Jett next to work. Terry Weens, Edmond, Oklahoma is the rider. 
If you notice that some of the healers have these heel ropes tied onto their horn and other ones will go ahead like Terry here and, and dally around the horn. That's optional here at the Bear Select Roping. His mare came around there and gave him a nice shot. She was a little high on that steer. And it reflects the score there a little bit. 206 for Zans, Katie Jett, and Terry Weens. Smokey's 2 ID next to work. Dennis Lane, the rider, lives in Omaha, Nebraska. This is a mare sired by Gray Poupon. And with that, I'll pass it over to you. Well, I'll try and muster up a good analyst on this <laughs> run here. Nice break right there comes in in a good position, gives him a nice stop, kind of turns a little sideways there, which will hurt his score some. And the score, 206 and a half. Zach Weege still has the lead, and here's his best friend, Doc Lon Lemon, lives in Gretna, Nebraska, and this is a gelding smart smoking token that we'll also see in the Working Cow Horse competition next week on this show. And showing the bloodlines of these good quarter horses, this gelding's mother, was world champion in this class in 97 at the AQHA World Show. And he had a nice run right there. And the score, 216 and a half, tied for first with his buddy, Zach Weegis. Those so scores can hold up. We might see these guys going head to head in a rope off. And speaking of Weegis, here he comes back on Miss Negolina. This is a sorrow mare. We talked about her being the full sister to the other mare that he's currently tied for the lead on. And again, set real good in the, in the box, comes out in a good position. Steer gets away from him just a little bit, and boy, he barely gets his dally there and gets that stop. Still winds up with a score of 210. Doesn't change things at the top of the leaderboard. As Roger Olson, who lives in Scottsdale, Arizona, gets set on top-notch jack. Roger's a veteran team roper. He's competed all over the United States and is an excellent roper. As you can see, he's got his rope tied on here. Comes in in a good spot, tracks up a little bit, trying to get his best shot at it, and really does a nice loop right there. Well, he was the last exhibitor to keep us out of a rope off. Doesn't happen. 212 and a half is the score for Olsen and top notch Jack. So that means that Zach Weegis and Lon Lemon are headed to a rope off. Two good friends to decide the world championship. Stephen Orth will be the header for both of these guys. And how do things change when you get into the rope off? Uh, any strategy changes there for these guys? Well, you really get to go for it here because you know the worst you're going to be is a reserve world champion, and that's really exciting. It's a little bit like overtime in, in the football games. I mean, you're going to hang it out there and try and get this win because you know it's right there in your grasp. Zach Weegis first to go. He was a reserve to Lee Lyles a year ago and problems with that steer. and. Boy, that's something that you, you, you don't count on, but it'll have a huge effect now on his score. And that's part of team roping right there. Uh, Steve got a nice loop on that steer, and that steer dropped its head a little bit, and when he try, went to turn him around, that steer hit the ground and came down. And that's just a bad break, but that's, that's part of team roping. Well, he's going to rebuild now. He has one more loop. That's his fiance standing up and watching there, so she's probably even more nervous than he is. But, uh, you know, not over yet. Still, still one more run to go, so... Who knows what can happen? Yeah, Jeff, he wants to go back down here, and, and Steve wants to try and get him a set and get him a good shot to go ahead and get a qualified score here and then leave it up to Lon to see what he can do. And he had a little tough luck there. Roped that front leg, which is not a legal catch, so uh, that's a little tough run there for him. So Doc, Lon Lemon backing into the box, needing only uh, to complete the run, qualified run, to win the world title. He won his first world title, actually, in a rope off, so he's been in this situation before. Boy, he's a Bayer Select veteran, too. He's been to three, qualified for three of the four that they've had so far. Yeah. He did a nice job. He came in and had a really good run. That's not always the easiest run to do. It's something that just has to happen and just, just get it caught. But he handled the pressure very well and came around that corner really nice. His horse gave him an excellent shot, and, boy, he just roped it good and got it all complete. I was lucky, as usual. Uh, anytime you win, it's uh, uh, you're fortunate. Uh, I've been fortunate that I've won it before, and I was really happy this year that I was able to tie one of my better friends and best friends. So uh, it was a it was a neat experience. So a battle of best friends for the Healing World title here at the Bayer Select Show for Lon Lemon. It's his second Bayer Select Healing World title, both coming by way of a rope off. And for Zach Weegis, he has to settle for runner up honors for the second year in a row. Hey, don't turn those cows out. We're going to need them cutting when we come back to Amarillo. 
Welcome back to Amarillo and the Bayer Select World Championship Show. Jeff Metters along with Pete Kyle. And Pete, any time you make it to an AQHA World Show, you have to qualify. It's not an easy task either, Jeff. You have to go to AQHA shows in order to qualify for this show. And then once you qualify, that's just the start of the tough work because then you have to make the top 15 in order to be able to make the finals and get to become a world champion. And speaking of that top 15, that's where we pick it up in cutting. First to work will be Marjorie Montana, ridden by Claudia Switzer, who lives in Minko, Oklahoma. This is a six-year-old mare sired by Montana Dock. And of course, the key to cutting is uh, you need a good dance partner. Got to find the right cows to show your horse off, and that's what Claudia will be trying to do as she makes her way into the herd here to kick things off. Jeff, cutting's a lot of fun to watch. I tell you, the rider rides into the herd real quiet and has to push some cattle out in front of them and then pick a certain cow. And like you said, you want it to be something that's going to work well with your horse and show your horse off to the best of its ability. And so Claudia is moving out there to try and get a clean cut on one there and then put her hand down and let her horse do the work and she sits there. You hear so much about the mirror image. You want the horse to, to mirror the cow, and you hopefully want to do that right in the center of the arena. You don't want a calf that's like that one right there, side to side, and then basically runs off. And so Claudia will take that opportunity to go ahead and go back to the herd and pick up cow number two. And that makes it hard right there to earn any credit at all. She just barely got to start to work that cow when it left the arena. And so, like I say, she's going to have to make up a lot of ground on the second one. She got a nice little clean cut right out there on this one. Mare getting down in front of the cow real nice. Has a lot of look to her. Very, very athletic mare. As you can see, she has helpers there that's gonna help turn this cow back and forth to help present this picture a little better to the judges, control that cow. She's finished it, now she's gonna have time to move back in for a third cow and come out with another cow to try and add that score up a little more. That second cow, she wanted something to challenge her horse a little bit more, you know, a little bit more of an effort to keep him out of the herd and, you know, maybe a, a little bit numb. So this third calf needs to be something that really gives her a chance to leave a lasting impression with the judges. They're so picky on, on watching them settle the herd so you can pick your cows and you know, these, uh, just a herd of, of Angus calves in there, and it's a good thing they have ear tags or they'd really be tough to tell apart. Boy, there she goes. She's getting down real good. Her mare was a little late getting back out of that, but it was a real deep stop and got across there real nice to get a stop across the arena. Two and a half minutes, you hear the buzzer sound, and for Marjorie Montana and Claudia Switzer, a score of 205, trying to find a calf that would help her Beef that score up a little bit. Couldn't do it. Oak and Telus is next to work. This is a gelding sired by Linus Telesis. Lynn Lasky is the rider from Oklahoma City. Lynn's riding in and surveying the cattle. And he's had, he's had a cow just kind of step right out here on its own. So he's just going to take one just right out like that. Get out of trouble. Get a nice cow to get started with here. And sure enough, nice little dance right there horse getting down really nice. Lynn stays busy. He's in the NCHA's top 100 of non-pro money earners at the moment. That was a very good first cow for Lynn. Well, and that's a big step in the right direction. When you can get something out of that first cow and you can build on that run, required to make at least one deep cut when you uh, enter the arena. You got two and a half minutes. And the reason, uh, just to give the judges a chance to see the horse and, and how cow he is when, when he's just kind of in the herd. It, it shows, yeah, that you can have control of the cattle. And like you say, a deep cut is where he brings out a lot of cattle like he has on this cut. Where the last one, he just kind of peeled one right off the outside. This way it shows that he can drive in there and cut a cow out of a, out of a big group of cattle and then work it from there. And he's done a nice, clean job again of getting cut and getting a good work here. This little calf is really trying him. kind of stalled out right there. They're trying to make it move, and that's kind of a bad deal for you, kind of just sitting there waiting, not much happening. So he goes ahead and quits it. That was just a, that cow hit it real quick and then stopped on him. 
So he's got time to go in for that third cow. And this time he won't take quite as deep a cut. They kind of ran around him there. He's going to pick one more out. And just again, you have to take your time and sort your cattle correctly and cut the right cow. There he's got one separated. Another one has come back in and stayed with him, so he'll keep his hand up until that cow gets separated from him. And again, this hurts the score as, a, as you're trying to have that separation right there. It's a little bit of bad luck for Lynn. You know, the second cow just kind of quit on him. A little trouble peeling that third cow out, and he winds up with a score of 208. That has the lead at the moment. More cutting when we come back. Back in Amarillo, Texas, and for you Route 66 trivia buffs, the Golden Light Cafe, you know that that is the oldest restaurant on Route 66 and still serving great hamburgers. Back to the cutting action, Chicks Achey Breaky, ridden by Jim Babcock, who lives in Valley View, Texas. Has two horses in the finals. Stands great horses like Smart Chickalina and Reminick, so this is a guy that knows a good cow horse when he sees one. Jeff. Jim is a very good horseman as he has also qualified two other horses in the reining besides the two in the cutting. So he's a very versatile showman. Like you say, he stands a battery of nice stallions and raises a lot of nice horses. And this is a really nice horse here that he's been very successful with. So he's got that cow and as you see, he stayed on that first cow that he stayed with there and we'll let that other one move out of his way. You know, convenience doesn't play a, a part there. You know, if, if, if you had a little, a little trouble, once you've kind of quasi-committed to a cow, you've got to stay with them. And getting some pretty good action out of this first cow after he finally did get the opportunity to drop his hand. When that cow turned away from him, you're able to pick up and stop and then move back in the herd and try and get another one. That cow kind of went back and forth across the arena and didn't really settle in the middle and play with him a little to let his horse show off. So Jim quit that cow and is going to try and pick another one that will maybe enable him to get a little higher score on it. You want to avoid a hot quit, a little bit of an art, you know, in, in learning how to, to get off of a cow, isn't it? Yes, it really is, as it a, it's a, can be a quick move. He's got a nice cow cut right here in the center where he wants it and letting his horse get down and show his athletic ability. Very nice, there he's really racking up some points. And again, once that cow stops and stands flat-footed, Jim can get away from him. Again, nice move right there. He got a nice work out of that cow, was able to move on to the next one here. Time remaining, you can see uh, a little less than 30 seconds, so plenty of time for Jim to go back and select cow number three. It's a real attractive quarter horse here. Really a pretty stallion. Very physical. And again, has another nice cow. This cow's got a lot of quickness to him, getting back and forth. And Jim finishes up real strong. Chicks Achey Brakey and Jim Babcock raising the degree of difficulty a little here. 211 is the score. That moves them on top. Now to Randy Majors and Pepto Bar Legacy. This is a stallion by Pepto Boonsmall. And here's a guy that started his career as a bull rider, and he's moved on over to cutting horses, and uh, one's fun to ride. The other one is uh, just extremely dangerous, I guess. <laughs> Randy's made this move over good, although his family's been in the horse business for a long time. His dad owned Poco Tivio, which is one of the great foundation horses of AQHA, and his father-in-law owned Royal King. So he's got a, good, a lot of good bloodlines in his family. Started roping calves when he was about 15, made nine trips to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo, but that was in the 70s, and unfortunately there was a guy named Donnie Gay riding bulls then, and that kept Randy from winning a world title, but he was reserve champion in bull riding on two occasions. He cut out a nice bald-faced calf here and is working her right here in the middle of the arena. Getting a nice job done on it. The horse is really attentive, looking at its ears, and staying right in front of that cow and keeping it from getting back to the herd and gets stopped and settled real good off of that first cow, moving back in for a second one. That was a good start right there. Pete, is it tougher to fine tune your cattle selection on what you really want when, when you have a herd this size? I mean, there's a lot of calves out there. 
It really is, Jeff. That's a lot of cattle to pick from, and it's hard to pick out a certain one with that many cattle and try and get there. I think that Randy's mainly just coming in and trying to get a nice clean cut out here in front and take what's left right there, and you can see that's what he's doing. Nifty piece of work in selecting that second cow. And again, really good shape, right in the middle of the arena. Horse is really getting down and working well, sitting on its hind end and turning. That was a quick move by that cow, and he got over there and covered it really nice. Another good, good clean stop. Move in for his third cow, and he's having a real nice work here. If he can get one more cow out in front of him, he'll have a nice score. Clock management always an issue. 15 seconds left now for Majors. And again, he's got a nice little cow right here in the middle. A little bit of a miss there, but not bad. He recovered over it. He's going to wind up having a nice score here, Jeff. And he takes the lead with a 215, so all three cows exactly what he wanted. As you can see, this horse is really doing a nice job of holding that cow away from the herd there, staying right in front and staying right in the correct position. Randy did a nice job. And Randy has the perfect Bayer Select attitude. I, uh, I finally put it into perspective. I had to get that rodeo mentality out of my mind, I'm wanting to win, you know, really win. So I pretend that that's, I'm going fishing. That's my fishing hole. I'm going down there, and if I catch something fine, if I don't, I'm going to be happy because I'm too old to get mad anymore. <laughs> so it's the retired bull rider that has the lead with a 215. That's the first half of the cutting, raining when we come back. Back for more of AQHA's Best of the West coverage of the Bayer Select World Championship, and we're calling that Kaiser Cam. The ground's important in cutting, but it's very important when you make the transition to raining, and that's where we are. Cowboy Smarts is the horse, a stallion, ridden by Jim Babcock, who has done well in the cutting. And you mentioned that he's got a couple of horses qualified in reining. We'll see how he handles the pattern here. They're going to start off and do four turns here to the left. And he did a very nice deal and stopped straight, so there wasn't a penalty right there. That's a very nice turnaround. Now, again, he's going to step up and do four more turns to the right. Jim, being the good showman, Got his horse turned around very nicely and stopped real clean and correct. Has no penalties there. It's a good start to his pattern. They talk about his experience. 40th year for him in showing horses. Started when he was 14 years old. Jim's been showing for a long time, and it shows in the way he rides. He's a very good rider and showman, and here he's making nice big circles with his horse and using the arena well. Then coming down to a small slow circle and then going to speed him back up and go back to another large fast circle and come through for a lead change. You can tell as he steps on the accelerator right there. This horse is a very attractive horse and he's carrying himself real well, real level right through here. Very balanced and a nice degree of difficulty in his speed. A little off center there. You saw that cone on the other side of the arena. You'd like to be coming right through the middle there. That affects your pattern just a little bit. Now, so much of reining is precision and execution. There, that was very nice. He came back, sat down real quiet, and that horse just came right back to a nice slow circle, and now it's a lot smaller than the large. And as you saw, he came back through the middle of the arena there. And now he's going to ride through the middle and wait just a little bit and then build him back up for one more large fast and then execute another lead change. You know, in training a reining horse, uh, it's not really running patterns, is it? You're just mo mostly working on maneuvers. How do you get one ready for a big show like this? Yeah, Jeff, there's a total of three different maneuvers that you actually do in the reining which combines over to eight maneuvers in the pattern. But you have your turns, your spins, which we watched Jim do to start off with, then your circles, and now what he's going to is the stops. And so you have to prepare your horse for several different maneuvers, and they're all quite physical, as you'll see here in the stop. He's running down really hard, 
and he got a very nice stop. Both hind feet stayed in the ground real solid. He didn't pick one up. And then you're going to roll back the other direction and come around. And he did a very nice job of that and then showing good control around. His horse is having a very nice pattern here. You know, they're, you know, they're athletes. They, you know, like everybody else, you have good days and bad days. Can you get a pretty good idea when you're warming your horse up before the show what kind of day he's going to have? Yeah, you do. You have a good uh, rapport with your horse at that point, and you can tell when he's mentally prepared. As long as, And he can tell if you're mentally prepared, and your nerves also play into his uh, condition as well. So it's a matter of it's a team right there, and so you both want to be working together very well. And so far, the team's working out quite well for Jim Babcock and Cowboy Smarts. Final sliding stop right here. He executed three really nice stops, and now he's going to back up. For the Cowboy from Valley View, Texas, score comes in at 213. Very solid. We'll see where that plays into this picture. Now to Lena's taxman. Linda Hamilton is the rider, lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. This is a gelding by Lena's Ride On. Very strong gelding in this industry. We've seen a 213. We'll see if Linda can improve on that. And as most cases, it's a, always a, it's a family sport. And uh, Linda has a daughter, Trish Hamilton, that won the NRHA non-pro derby this year on another horse that Linda qualified for the Bear Select World Show. If you watch reining or are a fan of reining, you know, it's really taken off on the international scene. But the thing that's really changed in the last five, six, seven years is the aggressiveness in the pattern. I mean, speed is the deal, and uh, it's, you've seen it move over to the non-pros and to the older reiners, and it's, uh, it's really the name of the game now, isn't it? It really is. Uh, you want to be very correct in your pattern and be very precise with all of your maneuvers, but you have to have some speed and degree of difficulty. As you saw, she ran a nice, fast, big circle there and then came back to a really smooth, pretty small, slow circle, and then we'll step him back up to that next big, fast circle. And you want them, the horses to show their athletic ability and then also show how quiet-minded they are. Linda's a very good rider, as she's proven before by being a world champion in this event. As she won last year's event with two different runoffs, so she, uh, she's been through it. That's a lot of work to get your first Bayer Select World Championship to have to go through two runoffs to get it. And she's sure making a run for it again here. I tell you what, again, nice circles. This horse staying very quiet, and she's running very precise pattern with good speed. So, so far, she's had a nice pattern. One more large, fast circle. Then the lead change, and she'll set up that first sliding stop. Again, you can see how level this horse is carrying himself, just making it very easy for him to do everything. Linda slows him down. She's going to come around the far end of the arena, turn him and get him straight, and then, and then increase him down for that stop. And he is going fast down through there and holds the ground real well. And then she hesitates right at the end of that stop to give him a second to be able to stand up and get his balance before she rolls him back and goes the other direction. Very nice job of showing right there. There's so much emphasis goes into that sliding stop, but uh, the rollback, also a very important piece of that maneuver. Yeah, that's all one maneuver is that stop. That's a huge stop, as you can see her coming right at you, and then rolled back real nice, very clean. This, she's having a very nice run. He's being very quiet and just waiting on her to tell her when to go. When, when she tells him to go, he speeds right up, as you can see, and runs right down there. Very big stop. That's a very nice run. Boy, how many times does an American Quarter Horse change gears in a reining pattern? You could see it right there. And the score for Linda Hamilton and Lena's tax man, 214 and a half. That gives them the lead at the moment. More raining when we return to Amarillo after a quick break. Amarillo, Texas is the international headquarters of the American Quarter Horse Association. They have a strong presence here at the Bayer Select World Show. And that is Kelly Gooley 
First ever year to qualify for the Bayer Select, she makes her first final. And this is Woe Fritzy Woe, a sorrel mare by Master Boot Jack. Kelly and her husband Jack have a nice leather company that most of us that show wear their shafts that they make. They're very good with their leather products. This mare started and had two sets of nice turnarounds here, just real smooth and clean. Maybe not quite as quick, but very smooth and very correct. Kelly showed as a youth, she got out of it for a while and then uh, came back to the showing arena uh, in big part because of this mare and, and how talented she is. Her mother, Jeff, is a great mare, Melissa Parker. I was very young in 82 when I got to watch <laughs> Cal Cooper show her and she qualified and was top 10 both in the junior reigning and junior cow horse. So again, we continue to see the pedigrees of winners coming through over and over here. As Kelly's running some very nice circles and adding quite a bit of speed to her fast circles here. And this mare is very quiet and relaxed about it. Boy, nice mover, has about $6,000 in NRHA earnings. But right now the focus, a Bayer Select reigning world championship. Kelly's doing a real nice job here. She trains with AQHA Professional Horsewoman of the Year, Carol Metcalf, and they obviously have done their homework and have their horse and rider together, as that's a real important part, that they're both tuned in and they're having a nice run. Pete is reigning become, you know, if not the most, but you know, one of the most competitive events that, that you're gonna find at an AQHA show now. I think uh, you're right. The depth of reigning uh, is just really good. Everybody is wanting to do it and compete in it as it has the international exposure that it's had and uh, it's really a lot of fun. She lines her mare out here and is creasing her up for a nice big stop and she did get a nice wow. big stop. Woo. And then waited and rolled back real clean right over her hawks. That's a plus one right there. That's the best stop we've seen all day. Very fancy and two more stops still remaining. Again, she goes from a nice low pace to increasing up to a nice big deal and another big stop with a very clean roll back. Kelly's putting it on them right here, right now. One more stop like that, Jeff, and I think she can, Katie, bar the door shut. Chance to wrap it up right here for Kelly Gooley. Whoa, Fritzy, whoa. And that's what she did. Wow. Very, very nice. Whoa, Fritzy, whoa, and Kelly Gooley. Three very strong sliding stops to punctuate this reigning run. And their score, 217, good enough to give them the Bayer Select World title. Going back to the spins, very start of the pattern. Laid the groundwork very nicely there. You can see it's holding that pivot foot there as it went. And then the big part of her pattern was the nice stop. She's just such a good girl. She is just such an easy horse to ride and show. She just has a lot of personality. She's just a cool horse. Great showing for Kelly Gooley here. Not only does she win the world title on Woe Fritzy Woe, also a top four finish for Sailor's Love Freckles. Great showing for her, her first Bayer Select World Show, and she walks away with a world championship. Well, that's just a taste of this year's Bayer Select World Show. More action next week, including the exciting finish to cutting. For Pete Kyle, I'm Jeff Metters. So long, everyone.